Hey everybody, welcome to HomeRecordingMadeEasy.com and here on my YouTube channel and welcome to another installment of Questions and Coffee with David. This is where I answer your questions first thing in the morning before I head down into the studio and start doing all my work for clients and for the Home Recording Made Easy uh, website. I'm answering all your questions and this morning it is literally 4.45 in the morning and we're going to answer a few questions in this video. If you want one of your... Um, Questions answered in a future video, please send in your questions to info at homerecordingmadeeasy.com and I'll be sure to get your question answered in one of these upcoming questions and coffee video segments. But before we get to the first questions, if you like what you see, please hit that subscribe button below. It helps me out tremendously. Also go out to facebook.com slash homerecordingmadeeasy and follow me on Facebook as well as Twitter. Search, uh, I think it's at homerecordingmadeeasy. You'll find me on Twitter. You can follow me there as well. So one once again, thank you so much for uh, joining me for Questions and Coffee with David. Now let's head on to question number one. Okay, question number one comes from Terry, and Terry writes, David, I follow your Studio One series and you do a fantastic job. I seriously can't thank you enough for the quick, easy, simple lessons. I have a quick question that you may have answered in one of your beginner setup videos, but I can't find it. The question is, after I, after I record a track, in my case it's usually guitars and vocals. When I click the track to play back what I recorded, Studio One keeps defaulting me to have the record button on, and if I don't turn my monitors down before each time I re-listen to the track, I get crazy free a crazy feedback sound. I'm still green to recording, and I have a cell phone and I've been a cell phone guy all this time. I figured it's time to step it up. So I may not be wording or explaining this correctly, but please let me know if you have any possible solutions or fixes or further clarification to this issue. Many thanks, Terry. Well, Terry, thanks for writing in and thanks so much for the kind words. I really do appreciate it. And I'm so happy that you found the channel, you're checking out the products and it's helping you. So yes, I understand, I think, what, what's happening here. Um, and what's basically happening is that every time you go to click on a track, whether you, after you recorded your guitar part, let's say, the track is arming itself automatically, recording, it's uh, arming it with the red record button, correct? I think that's how I understand it. There is a setting in the preferences window where you can turn that off to where it won't automatically arm the track for recording. It'll, um, you'll have to do it manually. So if you go up to the, um, I don't have Studio One in front of me, so I'm gonna do this from memory. If you go up to the file menu in the top left-hand corner of the screen, um, and click that you want to go to the preferences window and this is on a Mac if you're on a PC I believe you have to look in the um, in the options uh, in the in the navigation uh, menu You have to look for the options uh, Window, but on a Mac they call it preferences on a PC. They call it options I don't know why but it's slightly different anyhow when you get to the preferences window um, if you look through the tabs, and again, I don't have it in front of me, so I can't be sure, but in one of those tabs, you'll find that there is a checkbox that will allow you to um, take that off. So in other words, you can uncheck the box that will say something to the effect of enable record uh, track when highlighted or when followed or something to that nature. Uh, that is checked as a default in Studio One. If you uncheck it, what will happen is when you click on a track in your mixer view or in your edit uh, screen, it won't automatically arm the track. You can also do the same thing with the little monitor button, the little blue speaker button. There is a way to uncheck that, so you have to do that manually. Then, <coughs> excuse me. Then this way, when you automatically click on a track, it won't automatically arm the track and you won't get that feedback issue. I believe that's what your problem is. Try that out. Check it out. If you have or need any more further clarification or have any other questions, send it on in and I'll try to help you. But Terry, that's how uh, that will probably fix your problem. So I hope that helps. Thanks for writing in and now let's head on over to question number two. Okay, question number two comes from Bob and Bob writes in, Hey David, hi, first let me thank you for your amazing videos that you made available on YouTube. I've watched nearly every one of them and the Studio One is uh, is no longer quite so overwhelming. Well, thanks Bob, that's great. I'm, I'm awesome and you must be talking about the beginner's guide and I'm, I'm glad that that has helped you and now you feel a little bit more comfortable with Studio One. That was the whole point of all those videos. So thanks for watching and I'm glad it's helping. Um, his question is, I understand that your basic course is Mixing Made Easy Volume 1. And I assume that the first that is the first course I should take. However, I believe I'm starting at a point before that, in other words, laying down tracks. I have heard about tricks and techniques to recording tracks such as laying down scratch tracks first, using a metrodome, setting levels, miking guitars, etc. Is that the process? What I believe would be uh, called for the recording process covered in this training. If not, do you, do you have a different course 
uh, or can you recommend something that I can that I can use in advance to your series if necessary? Thanks, Bob. Okay, so basically what he's asking is Mixing Made Easy Volume 1 is one of my more entry-level courses, but he's looking for more of a recording course before a mixing course. So the short answer to your question is yes. If you're looking for the basics of recording, you can head over to a homerecordingmadeeasy.com and check out Recording in PreSonus Studio One Made Easy. That is an absolute beginner's course where I take you from the very beginning stages of how to hook up your audio interface, how to install your software, how to register your software, things that you have probably already know how to do, but again, we're starting from the beginning. And then I take you through an entire song showing you how to do record electric guitar, acoustic guitar, vocals, uh, a piano part with a mini controller, and using uh, software drums to create a drum track so I think that's probably what you need we talk about levels we talk about gain stage and we talk about miking techniques for acoustic guitar so I think that might be a good starting point for you so check out recording in pre Sonus studio one made easy on my website and that will be probably what you need and then from there you can go to either mixing in pre Sonus studio one made easy which is kind of similar to mixing made easy in uh, volume one except I'm using only pre Sonus uh, stock plugins um, and then you can move over to Mixing Made Easy Volume 1 and Volume 2. So I hope that answers your question, Bob. Again, thanks so much for writing in. If you have any other questions, feel free to write me again. Now let's head on over to question number three. Okay, question number three comes from Bill, and Bill writes, Hi, I'm new to recording in PreSonus, and I don't know anything about it. I learned how to import a rhythm track into my PreSonus Studio One Artist 3 from Johnny Guy. But I know Johnny. Johnny's a good friend of mine. I play pedal steel guitar and I use rhythm tracks that are ready to go. My tracks are very good tracks. I use them a lot with no trouble, but when I import them into Artist 3, Studio One Artist 3, I can hear a cracking and popping before I add my steel guitar. And after I add my steel guitar track, I can, heave it, I can hear it even worse. I don't know how to get rid of it. I tried to contact Johnny. Um, but he hasn't, he hasn't responded yet. Can you help me? Thank you very much. Well, I know Johnny Guide very well. Johnny is a very good friend of mine, and um, I can tell you that. Uh, Johnny will get back to you. I'll answer your question here, but don't be surprised if you hear from Johnny. Johnny is a, a super busy guy as well, and um, Johnny is uh, very helpful in the pre Sona Studio One community. So uh, props to Johnny for helping you out. And yeah, let me see how I can help you uh, here, Bill. So yeah, what you're hearing, the propeling and the crackling that you're hearing has to do I believe with the device block size setting. So you want to go up to your file um, menu at the top left hand corner of the screen. You want to go to your um, uh, preferences window and you want to go to the audio setup screen or tab and at the, in the top part of that screen you will see the device block size. Now you want to make sure that when you, and this is all dependent on your computer, how fast your computer is, how much RAM you have in your machine, and I've answered this kind of question before, but here's a general rule of thumb. When you're recording, you want to set those um, that device block size is almost as low as possible, right around 120 uh, Eight uh, or 256. When you're mixing and you start adding plugins, you want to get that up as high as you can possibly go. Uh, it could be 1024, it could be 2048 20, samples. It, de it depends on your interface and your computer. So when you're recording, set it lower. When you're mixing, set it higher. And that is going to make your uh, computer run in a more efficient way without getting too technical. And that should alleviate the problem. That's the problem 99% of the time. So if you're recording, your guitar track and then you go to and then when you and you can hear all this crackling and popping you probably have the device block size set too low you want to raise the device block size and that should alleviate the problem if that doesn't help send me in another email and I'll try to help you further but that usually solves the problem nine out of ten times so again Bill thanks for writing in and say hi to Johnny for me if you talk to him now let's head on to question number four okay question number four comes from Lance and Lance writes in hello good sir hey hey Lance. <laughs> you don't have to call me sir you can call me Dave uh, I enjoy learning from all your videos thank you very much well thanks Lance for saying that I really do appreciate it I'm glad the videos are helping you I have a huge question uh, I have a huge question with an issue I've had for a few months tracking male vocals with the warm audio EQ EQPWA which is the pull text style warm audio EQ uh, I have a deeper voice somewhat do you think it's better to track with low with a low end setting on 800 Hertz boosted a couple of DB or 30 60 or 100 Hertz I have a small studio in a bedroom also, boost high frequencies 5K, 8K, or higher. Around what settings do you find yourself using while tracking a male vocal with your 
with your e with your uh, Pultec EQ. So can I fiddle around with the frequencies until it sounds worthy? Please help, Lance. Okay, Lance. Well, thanks for writing in. Um, the answer to your question is, um, there's not a lot of, again, I get this question a lot about EQ settings and it has so much, there's so many variables. There is no set of EQ settings I can give you to make it perfect for your voice. What you asked at the, what you said at the end of your question is really what you need to do. You need to fiddle around with the settings until you find what sounds good to you. Don't worry about what it says as far as the frequencies, worry about how it sounds. Um, the, the, the thing that I will tell you, if you have a deep voice, for a male vocal is you want to roll off maybe around 100 hertz and lower so on your low frequency on your warm audio eq go to 100 hertz and attenuate it a little bit that's going to help um, also if you want to bring a little more top end you can try around 12k 16k and boost that up a little bit that's going to help but again it depends on the microphone it depends on your voice it depends on so many things that there's no one uh, set of settings that are going to help. Uh, one product that might help you as you move forward with your uh, with your recording, your EQing, mixing, and mastering is you may want to check out EQ Made Easy at HomeRecordingMadeEasy.com. I talk a lot about this. I show you how to use EQs uh, in the DAW and uh, kind of find those magic frequencies. And I show you the difference between stock EQs and third-party EQs. I know you're using hardware here, and that's a fantastic EQ, by the way. Um, but EQ Made Easy might help you just wrap your head around more around equalization and then you may want to look at compression made easy because that's going to be the next logical step for you so the answer to your question is um, fiddle around get rid of the real low end again if you have a deep voice and if you want to bring a little more top end in uh, you know go around that 12 uh, to 16 K and give it a little bit of boost be careful around the 8 K range because you're going to get a lot of sibilance but again it depends on the microphone that you're using if you are you using a dynamic microphone or are, are you using a large diaphragm condenser microphone how does that sound does it have a bright sound to it a warm or a dull sound to it there's so many variables that I can't give you a, a set of settings but that should help you Lance and uh, let me know how that works out for you and if you have any other questions and I would be glad to help you so that's it for this video join me next time for questions and coffee with David where we'll look at some more uh, questions from you guys and again if you want your question answered in one of these videos please send it in to info at home recording made easy.com that's where I get these emails if you send me a message on YouTube or on Facebook I don't always get those the best way and the fastest way to get a hold of me is info at homerecordingmadeeasy.com and I'll be sure to put your question in one of these upcoming videos. Once again, please hit that subscribe button if you haven't done so already. Share this video with others that again, it helps me out tremendously and I so appreciate you helping me grow this channel. The bigger and the larger the channel gets, the more content I can create for you guys. Also head over to Facebook and follow me on Facebook, Twitter as well. And until the next Questions and coffee video. This has been David with homerecordingmadeeasy.com and I will speak to you all soon. Take care.